Hello, my name is Priscilla Timmy, and you're welcome to another episode of Founders Connect. Here, I have conversations with amazing entrepreneurs and operators of African tech startups. Today, I'm having a conversation with Ayo Kindili, the founder and CEO of Kishi. Kishi is a Texas 21 company and it's a fintech company operating in London and Lagos. So let's get right into the video. Make sure you watch the video to the end. We're going to be learning about Ayo's journey so far and why he decided to build the company and you know the plans that he has for the future. I think it would be interesting. Believe me, stick with me. Let's do this. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am PC Timmy, a change maker, professional, and creative who is passionate about growing people and growing businesses. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and please always share my videos. It promises to always be impactful and insightful. Super, I love that intro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, first of all, who is Ayo Kindili? Ayo. And tell me from like the background, like. Okay. So interestingly, I wasn't born Ayo Akindele. Oh, okay. Um, not was, Ayo, not Akindele, not Ayo well, Akindele. Ayo was there somewhere <laughs> on my birth certificate. Akindele actually wasn't there. But um, so born in, born the 13th of March 1983. So that makes me almost 39. That I feel old. But um, yeah, so I was born Moxen. Ayodeji Najimuddin. So I was born into a very Islamic home. Right. Um, but hey, long story, a couple of decades later, became a Christian. Um, and that surname that I had, which was Najimuddin, very Islamic name, um, we then took our actual family name, which mm -hmm. is a Yoruba name, which is Akindele. So right. yeah, so what's on my birth certificate is very different from what's on my passport today. So yeah, um, so yeah, I am now Ayodeji Akinola Abiola Akindele. So yeah, still Ayo long, Akindele. Still long name. Still long name. But <laughs> a lot of people call me no gym, actually. Okay. Still call me no gym. A lot of people that I went to school with still call me no gym. But yeah, so Ayo Kindele, no gym, whatever. Thank you. Yeah. So I know that you're British. Um, did yeah. you grow up in London or in the UK or yeah, when so did you Yes, so I was born in London. Um, so born three, three boys. I'm the middle child. Uh, we were each born in London and just shipped back to Nigeria. <laughs> you know how it was back then, Kole passport and Japan back, <laughs> back home. Nigeria was where my parents were. Okay. Um, but, you know, my dad was a British citizen, but we lived in, the, in Nigeria. So whenever each of us were about to be born, come to London, have us, head back. back. You know, I was born in 1983, which was the year that um, the UK government actually stopped giving you automatic citizenship because you're born in the UK. But thankfully, right. my dad was British, so yeah, that you know, I kind of qualified, so it worked my favor. But I spent a lot, the first 16 years of my life in Nigeria. Where um, Nigeria, Lagos? Oh, a bunch of places. So, Ijesha, Surulere, um, and then from there, I lived in Cantonment in Ikeja. From there, LSDPC, Ebutemeta, which I spent, I think, the last 14 years, sorry, the last four years, oh, yeah, so or the 16 in Nigeria. And so I feel Ebutemeta, like Yaba, that's me. <laughs> LSDPC estate. Lots of people came out there, lots of great folks. So did you move back to London? Oh, is it London or the UK? So yeah, I moved to London when I was 16. For school? For school. Well, I left after SS2. Um, so I, I went to school in the home science primary, then secondary was St. Gregory's for my first three years. Then I went to ISL and I spent just two years in ISL after SS2, moved to the UK. So I was about 16 then. Um, that was back in 1999. Okay, so um, what was schooling like there? In London or Lagos? Study? In London. In London. Okay, so I went, I had to finish the GCSE. So I didn't do SSC, SSC obviously mm -hmm. in Nigeria. So. I got to UK and um, it was quite interesting because like, wow, I felt really smart <laughs> in London. <laughs> so, you know, I think there's this, um, I mean, Nigeria has a, such a strong academic um, sort of, uh, what's the word, just curriculum. Squeeze it, squeeze it. Yes. Yeah. And um, I found out by the time I moved to the UK, even in that year, when I was in class in my GCSE classes I just felt like the most brilliant person in those classes because I think we were just a bit more advanced mm. for people in the UK in that year <laughs> so because after a while I started tutoring my classmates I was actually getting paid <laughs> to teach them math so I used to have private tutoring with yeah. my classmates so um, so that was good I mean everything just felt easy I mean I was being taught fractions like one over two plus three over four <laughs> at SS3 I was thinking come on I did this in like SS1 or like GS3 mm -hmm. but anyways it was fun I was 
a science, science student, but as soon as I came to London, my older brother was here already. So first things first was just, I mean, I think my first night, as soon as I got to UK, we hit the clubs. <laughs> but anyways, I was just thinking like, look, we just got to start making money. Yeah. We're here to hustle. So it was, yes, go to college, but also get a job and start making money. Because, oh, so what jobs did you do then? Oh, okay. So my first job, very interestingly, was I was working at McDonald's. <laughs> and that was like, look, I, I loved it because what? Well, Oh, you can eat McDonald's, right? Like, um, and and I think, look, I did it very diligently. Like, I do everything. Um, I was living in North London, around uh, I think it was Wilsden Green. Uh, Dolly's Hill was where, not Dolly's Hill, Swiss Cottage was where the branch was. So a couple of stops on the tube. And uh, but you know what? Like, I s starting at McDonald's, you're cleaning up after people clearing up, yeah. cleaning toilets and stuff like that. It was a rite or passage or whatever it is yeah. to, to hustle. And I didn't feel any way about doing it because for me, I was a 16 year old, I was already making money. Yeah. And to think of that evolution from where I was then to where I am now, I just feel like, look, for everything that I did, look, I spent about 18 months in McDonald's to the point where I became, you know, uh, manager, managing the kitchen. <laughs> you grew up the ranks. <laughs> I grew up the ranks, managing the, the kitchen by the time I left. So I felt, felt accomplished. And then I felt like Did I- Did you do another kind of then, then I then I, then I then I left there and went to uh, Tesco, um, mm. no, Sainsbury's, sorry, Sainsbury's, because we moved, we moved to Fulham. Mm. So I got a job at, and I really felt like that was a huge promotion <laughs> uh, back then. I was still in college all this time. Yeah. So for, for me to have been in college, studying, while also earning a living at the same time, because this wasn't time anymore to start yeah. still trying to ask parents for money, to be yeah. converting Naira to send money to pounds, which brings me to what <laughs> is, is, and the challenge that yeah. parents still face today but anyways I just felt my, my, my brother was already working at Waitrose yeah. and he spent many years there even while he was also studying so it was just following his footsteps yeah. and hustling grinding um, but you know what I loved every that just that learning and development yeah. right no matter what kind of job I found myself in you know it, while you're studying, it's not like you have a lot, you know, of, options, lot, lot of yeah. options to go and be working at the biggest companies, no. So take a job at a takeout or whatever. I mean, so I was pretty content. Uh, at the end of each month, I had a good solid for a couple of hundreds of pounds in my account and um you can go to the club yeah right? exactly hit the clubs <laughs> buy a drink take girls out for dates you know that kind of stuff so yeah it, it was it was cool it was a good time Very I interesting. It. okay so i mean after college um I, from your linkedin i see that you actually did like a full-blown corporate career before startup mm. like you spent almost 13 years if i'm correct in a venture capital firm yeah. 14 years mm. doing like accounts my like tell me about the experience of that corporate job yeah and then i walk like 14 years ago time oh yeah so first of yeah. all I want to know what you how you got in mm. why you stayed that long and at what point did you say yeah. hey, you know what I've I'm done now and I want to go build a startup yeah um, so yeah this was a really like main 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 I think very very critical part of my of my life and I'm sort of pleased that I'm having to have that conversation today because actually for most of today I've been pitching about my company and <laughs> uh, it's draining but like I will still touch on it but look so I left Sainsbury's and in fact before I started our role at a company called Prequin um, so I spent nearly 14 years there yeah prior to that I was working at the head office of House of Fraser um, where I was working in lingerie like women's lingerie um, very you interesting that, like, very like you I don't even know how I don't even know how I ended up in that job <laughs> but it was fun I was like the only male in my department um, I was account manager I was working in merchandise and I was account manager for like lots of the high-end women's lingerie brands and you know I go to all these shows and see models and yeah it was a good time I was like a, I was like a lingerie connoisseur then yeah. but anyways um it wasn't paying as well as much as it was attractive it wasn't paying that well and I just had this ambition to like want to earn more yeah um, so I took up well I was just looking for I said well I've got to be in the city if I wanted to earn 
significantly more. Yeah. And so I made a conscious decision to like just start applying to roles in the city. And I felt like it needed to be a sales role. Um, I felt I was personable and all that kind of stuff. I could build relationships. I could sell. I've been selling since I was in a kid, since I was a kid in school. So it was, uh, yeah, I was lucky enough to have joined what was a great startup at that time. So this was 2007, a company called Prequin, which had only been in existence for about four years. Um, at that time? At that time. I'd gone through a long period of like looking for jobs that by the time I even got to this interview, I was so blasé. Um, but you know, I was so relaxed mm -hmm. and that was actually what got me the job. You know, so I wasn't trying to form or whatever. Yeah. And, um, but it turned out to be, probably the most a life-changing moment for me because awesome. um, it was a company that was though young but very unique in what it was offering so it was a, a data company mm. we were uh, the we became the leading data provider in the alternative asset space so private equity mm -hmm. real estate hedge fund we were serving you know the biggest corporates that are active in alternatives and we were displacing like huge company like Thomson Reuters mm. um, who had products that were in this space as well. But we had a unique offering and I joined the sales team. So it was myself and the CEO and founder mm. um, who were the sales team. And um, it was just such a great time. I mean, I was learning, this is my first proper sales yeah. experience, but <laughs> You know, I was talking about the, the road I was doing before and how I was, I was earning really crap money. I think I was earning like 17 and a half thousand pounds roughly a year. Yeah. Um, so that was like peanuts per <laughs> month. But then in my first month, I was like on track for like 75K a what? month. Like a, a year, month. sorry, a year. <laughs> a year. I'm like, so that was, for so, so that was, geez, like in my first month, so I saw my paycheck and I was telling my boss that, dude i think i'm buying a jag so my first car was a jag when i was 23 and um and wow. london so my, wow. I was, yes so and uh yeah so you can imagine 23 year old in london driving a jag like yes i was having the time, time of my life. life um it was i mean we were i you know, it was easy selling mm product was awesome we were in a white space so like huge amount of companies that we could work with and sell to product was just selling itself all I had to do was just show up mm -hmm. and I'll just be taking orders so yeah and I just travel around we then open offices in New York in lots of other regions so by the time I left officially early last year uh, 2021 I'd only spent 14 years there um, yes I joined early part of the first 25 people, but in the sales team were just two of us. So we're the ones that were bringing in the money. And so, yeah, I got given shares and options in the company. So by the time I left, made out pretty well. You're good. You're right. Um, so it was such an interesting time. What, because, what kept you in there for that long? Yes, good question. Because again, I had probably had lots of opportunities. Yes, oh yeah. You know, I was, I didn't need to go anywhere. A lot of my friends were working at investment banks, consulting firms and stuff like that. And these guys were overworked, mm -hmm. worked to the bone. I was working a lot too, but you know, sales is like, if you work 24 hours, you will get, and our money was uncapped. Mm -hmm. So I was just enjoying selling and just taking yes, money in. And right. I think I was probably making it easier than if I was in an investment bank or, yes, and I was working with by, all these type of firms. Like, by your Third year, uh, fifth year, you're making like how much a year? Uh, I was easily on at least a hundred grand a year um, by that time. Um, with bonuses and things even more but then again we were being awarded shares and options mm. which you know again later the company was growing year yeah. on year so all of those things was the added incentive not to leave because you could see how the company was growing and um so it was just like why like these shares are worth so much now and you know it would be worth so much more in the future and my pay was just increasingly up year on year and I was in a great position in the company I was a leader in the company I was helping build teams yeah. I was helping build our brand globally so it was I mean it's a company that's really close to my heart even I mean I'm I consider them still family and you know a lot of I'm still in touch with a lot of the folks there so there was no need for me to leave. I was only ever going to leave to go do my own thing. Mm. Um, and that was the only thing that could have left me to, you know, to leave Prequent. Absolutely enjoyed my time there. Learned so much working so what, with what the founder. So what would you say is the top 
three lessons that you learned and what were the biggest challenges that you also met in that 14 years? Let me start with challenges. Though not a challenge, but something that I challenged myself with. Mm -hmm. And that was my uh, sort of, I guess, people developments where I was helping uh, coach and lead people. Mm. Um, you know, I joined a company not really having managed, had managed a bit in McDonald's, but it was the same, it was different, different from, yeah. you know, leading a team of salespeople yeah. in the city. City is crazy in London, lots of things happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, leading people into talking with like top execs. Um, so, yeah, I mean, building the business while bringing people in and trying to, you know, just expand your team and sell more. So, I would say it was a good challenge to have had, um, but it was also one of the things that I learned um, the most at my time there because I was watching the CEO founder who I was very close to and seeing how he was leading us in um, in the best way, the absolute best yeah. best boss was one, one could have wished for. And, and that's what, th those are the things that I'm sort of carrying today and trying to instill and just practice in my company. So um, yeah, absolutely loved le that learning experience. And it made me a lot more entrepreneurial and a lot more commercial you know, thinking about just how you go into and assess an opportunity and how you explore an opportunity. Yeah. So in my last few years at Prequin, um, I wasn't selling directly to companies any longer. Um, because yeah, prior to that, I would go into Goldman Sachs or yeah. Credit Suisse or wherever, and I would sell our products. But in the last few years, I created a new business within the sales team, which was called Channel Sales. And that was working with um, third-party companies that would distribu redistribute our data. Right. So in my last few years, it was a different type of thinking because it's like you're going into strategic partnership. So it's a, it's not just you know going and try to yeah. take an order. It's assessing an opportunity, synergy between us. So I did some you know really like awesome multi-million dollar deals before in my last few years with the likes of you know S and P Global, Factset, you know um, which made the news and stuff like that. And these were like great deals for us as a small company to have done. Um, really took us to the next level in terms of like revenue generating and so on. So yeah, I mean, it was just such a, 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 a training ground for me yeah. in, in business and entrepreneurship. And, uh, but you know what, all of that time, I was kind of doing Kishi in an informal way. Okay, so because tell I was us about doing that. that and what Kishi yeah. is. Yeah, so, so Kishi um, today is a digital banking platform. Um, our core focus is remittance. Okay. And what we're looking to do is to democratize FX for Africans globally. Um, uh, we found, teach. yeah, thank you. we're practicing that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we're practicing that a lot, thanks to Techstars. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, I just found myself in the middle of, for about 10 years now, or 11, helping people send money to and from Nigeria. Right. Um, you know, like I said, I had that experience myself, having moved here and having yeah. to deal with my mom trying to send money to us or, you know, get money back and forth. And um, so, yeah, it was a, a case of how can I make sending money um, easier? Yeah. You know, people send money informally, uh, which is what they did a lot till the last few years, which prior to that, it was, okay, how can I get pounds in the UK? You'd look for someone that can, you know, an intermediary that can help you get pounds in, in the UK while you give them Naira in Nigeria. And it was just very informal. And, um, you know, so it would, it was something that I was in the middle of because I, I'd get asked by friends and family who would need this help in exchanging money. Yeah. And so I find myself like building a huge network of people that wanted to send money mm -hmm. back and forth between the US and Nigeria, Nigeria to the UK. And I was doing this through, again, relationships that I was just building. Mm. And um, I found it to be a nice sort of side hustle to do, things I would do over WhatsApp yeah. or actually started on like Blackberry Messenger back yes. then and, you know, I'd do broadcasts and, and all kinds of things. So it was an easy thing for me to get into. And because of my relationships was, I could keep relationships really well. So I found myself making a lot of money from this and I was thinking, well, 
you know, how can I like duplicate myself? How can I digitize myself so that mm, I don't have to spend so much time? I can do yeah. that scale. I don't have to spend so much time, you know, talking to that person, talk to that person. Surely there must be a way I can build a platform that can just do this in a safe and secure environment so that two parties can come together, exchange money with each other, get the best rates, get the speed. Um, and so Kishi is, is a modern way in which people have been exchanging money for many, many decades, uh, where you know there's this informal way in which people send money. <clears throat> so today, what is considered to be formal is you going on to Western Union or TransferWise or World Remit and sending money to Nigeria, and uh, you get a preset rate, and uh, you know you see your fee. But till today. You know, I want to send money to Nigeria. No, I'm using, well, I'm using Kishi today. But prior to that, <laughs> I would look for someone that can give me Naira in Nigeria because my pound sterling is worth yeah. X more yeah. than whatever I would get on these other platforms. So the, 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 the aim was to see how can we provide a safe and secure environment in which people can do this and manage all of those uh, money laundering risks and um, the risk of people getting access to dirty money or even having your accounts closed which are all the things that were bad with this way in which informally money was yeah. transferred and so Kishi is has taken all of that away and we've uh, you know we work with banks we're pretty much considered like a a, a digital bank um, so in the UK we are um, what is considered to be an electronic money institution mm -hmm. through our banking so partnership fully registered and licensed yes in the UK. absolutely and, and and likewise in Nigeria as well through our banking partners <clears throat> we keep expanding those expanding those partnerships um, and looking to do that in other African countries so um, think of us as your revolute for Africa we're kind of merging revolut with it say wise mm. transfer wise in a way to so provide for like the personal banking and a wise yes. for travel and remittance Ex exactly um and and we're looking to offer you know a borderless you know democratized just fx solution for africans because we know that we have so much issues with our FX in Africa, you know, you want to travel out of the country, it's hard for you to get FX. You want yeah. to send money out of the country, it's hard. Even to send money between Nigeria and Ghana is a Very hassle. Hard, yeah. So this is what Kishi is looking to solve. Okay. We believe there's a huge power, um, there's huge power in the diaspora and what they hold and what they're bringing. And so we're here to harness that, but in a modern way that really takes Africa and connects Africa better to the rest of the world financially. Okay, two questions. Um, there are a lot of Webinton startups right now. Yeah. With almost around the same page. Mm. So what is Kishi doing that differentiates you and makes you and will make you stand out in the market? That's not just best yeah. rate because everybody says best rate. Absolutely. And the second lesson is in the I think one year plus that mm -hmm. you've done it, mm -hmm. what would you say have been like the biggest milestones and the lessons you've because I mean you have a, a great career selling and building yeah. a business from yeah. a team of two people to like yeah. ten. Uh, but now I mean now you're building your startup and mm -hmm. it's in Africa and it must be different. So what are mm -hmm. the challenges there? What are you doing with the competition? Mm -hmm. um, um, and then the biggest milestones in the last two years. So two questions. Yeah. Okay. So the challenges are actually, yeah, competition, like setting yourself apart. And um, but let's let's face it, like quite honestly, like for Africans, especially those in the diaspora, you work hard for your money. You want your money to go in the furthest way possible. Um, whatever type of job you're doing in the UK, whether you're a janitor or you're an investment banker, you know, if you want to send money home, whether to just friends or family or to support people or to um, invest, you want to get the best bang for your buck. Um, and that is what people are doing. They're looking for the best way they can provide, they can get the best bang for their buck. What I find, especially in the UK, those off, those um, options and all alternatives to Kishi that people have, they don't get the best rates. And so, yes, best rates is a big part of what sets us apart. Like people can get as much as 50% more better rates in terms of the better rates than what they can get on other traditional money transfer platforms. So mm -hmm. that's a big plus for us. Um, or if you're in Nigeria, you're trying to send money to the UK, well, you can get it done in the speediest possible way, yeah. most convenient way than you go to your bank, your bank will tell you they don't have FX. Yeah. They will actually tell you to go to the black market to go and um, buy dollars, yeah. come back to the bank, put it in your bank account. And if you don't have a if you don't have a dumb account, open a dumb account. We know how long yeah. that process is. Open an account. Well, 
we've just built this solution that is modern, is fast, easy for you to just sign up, set up an account, get onboarded immediately, and you know you can send money within minutes to the UK. So this is what really sets us apart. We brought in all the new technologies in place today, open banking in the UK, faster payments, uh, payment processing, that's modern, that, that makes sending money cost effective. So we built all these things and it hasn't been easy building this over the last two years. Um, so yes, we're now a team of about uh, 18 across the UK and Nigeria, mm. uh, made up of a lot of engineers, products, compliance, which is a huge part of what yeah. we do, um, marketing, uh, and uh, yeah, just looking to expand a lot more. I um, can't remember the other parts Mouse of your question. Milestones, okay, great. Well, hopefully we'll be reaching one pretty soon, which is reaching our 50, thousandth user wow, um, so we're just under that right now uh, we've been growing phenomenally so really really pleased with that it's great to have seen the the amount of impact that we can have on our customer base um, we get people sending us messages either on social media or just messages saying they try, they try out kishi and they send a message to us saying how fantastic it is and how like wow this is now my new best friend yeah. um, and it's real. It's not like, you know, yes. sometimes companies <laughs> like make up testimonials. But, but when obvious. we have like real ones and it's awesome to see that type of impact. Um, but we know that there's a lot more that people want to get. Like Africans are looking for ways that they can shop easily, more easily on Amazon or ASOS or, you know, and really get, you know, that value, that same value that people in the, in the West get. And so we are getting there and we've got a suite of stuff as a matter of fact you know these other remittance companies are actually companies that we're seeing opportunities and ways that we can work with because right. so um you know we're creating the the most robust money market of currencies across africa and the diaspora and these are uh, this is an infrastructure that we're actually building that we can help connect like m other money transfer companies and we're actually doing that already where money transfer companies or say Africa focused uh, services like for example there's a top US bank that's focused on the African diaspora mm -hmm. that's looking to integrate with us so that they can offer our services to so, their to yeah. their on their platform so it so creates a lot of collaboration and packages yes, uh, absolutely so you know um, so though we do compete we with all of these money transfer companies, we also see a way that we can work with them. As a matter of fact, one of the top, I'm not gonna say them now until we launch it, but I'll say they're top three in terms of money transfer companies in the world. Um, we would be like the first, I'll say Africa focused platform to be working with them. Um, yeah, when we do release that, it's gonna be really, really big. And so really, really excited to be working with them. Um, but yeah, so we see synergies as opposed to competition okay. as such. That's a, that's a good way yeah. to answer the question. Yeah. My final question, if you can do this in one minute. Um, okay. You got into Textiles, and what yeah. what has been the impact text, being, in, being a Textiles company has made in the growth of Kishi? Absolutely, so Textiles being one of the top global accelerators in the world. So really pleased to have gotten in there. Uh, went through the standard process of applying, but also got some of our mentors make some good introductions. But, um, you know, look, um, there were lots of things that I didn't know about running a business that I didn't know were so important to have in place. Um, Techstars taught us a lot of those things through our mentors or just through the programs that were set up for us. Um, so. My biggest takeaways with that, um, and Techstars is phenomenal for their network and the contacts that they have. So, you know, they're the most, um, I think, networked accelerator in the world, where there's Techstars almost in every part of the world, apart from Africa, but I think that is changing soon. Um, and so literally anyone that you want to get connected to, any potential partner that you want to get connected to, whether that's in the US or Asia, Textiles can connect, yeah. connect you. So I'll just give you an example, a banking partner that we've been trying to connect with for a year um, in the US, the US would be by far the biggest market for us um, once we open up out there. Um, this wasn't, I mean, we'd reach out to them and they'd be like, no, no one would even respond to us. Yeah. But we got Textiles to just say, hey, look, we want to connect to and within like two weeks I got a meeting set up with this yeah. company and I was on a call and now we're progressing so yeah I mean those have been by far the biggest things um, and of course the 
uh, exposure that it gives you to potential investors. Yeah. So we're raising, and yeah, so you know we get all these incoming requests and companies that you know really want to see, learn more about what we're doing and phenomenal stuff that we're doing. So yeah, it was a you know a great great opportunity um, to uh, to have been part of it. It's yeah, amazing. Sure. I mean, I, I think we're in here now, but it's been very interesting learning about your journey. Just Thank you. learning about you, girl. You know, Thank and you. that you like clubs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, but also, I was I was very curious about your career, um, your 14 year career, and just yeah. like learning how that started and where yeah. you stayed. I think that's yeah. pretty impressive. I would I would definitely highly recommend you know people to you know to spend time learn you know build their professional selves um, but of course you know when it's the right time to explore an opportunity you know um, take that risk um, gamble yeah it might seem like a gamble but you will regret it if you don't mm. and so but so far I'm having a great time um, and uh, you know doing something that's really impactful so yeah really you know pleased with the career I had yeah. and you know even more excited about what the future is as a as a founder now so yeah yeah, um, yeah it's a good place to like, be thank the, you the, the four, I think there are like four key things I'm taking out of this interview mm. one is when you said that you got into sales because you think you were personable I think mm. it's so important to just know yourself and know what you're oh, yeah. in choosing like yeah. the kind of places you want to work for and the career you want to be with and also just like giving yourself to like learning and professional development like you said there's yeah. nothing that can compete with just doing the work selling and people People, I get that definitely from my parents. My mom was head of sales at British Airways in Nigeria for like 30, <laughs> 35 years. Um, my dad is like a chief imam of mosque and has a huge I following. Did, yeah. He knows people, he knows how to talk, he knows yeah. how to build relationships. So yeah, I definitely take a bunch it's of those things from, yeah. from them. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. That's very nice. And the last thing I was going to say was just about collaboration. Because yeah. when you answered the question about competition, I think it was a very smart way to just say yes again. Because we're playing a ball, we are going to find a yeah. way to like co collaborate and just have strategic yeah. partnerships and then just. It's a huge space. There are lots of folks space. that we can work with. I mean, the biggest, even the biggest unicorns out of Africa, like, you know we will work with them. Um, so, I mean, the space is big enough for a lot of folks, but I'm looking to take as much share as I can take, <laughs> for sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, again, I know all of them quite well. And yeah. I think they know of us now, where we're, you know, they're feeling they us. Well. <laughs> they're Amazing. Feeling us. Thank you so much, Ayo, for having this conversation You're welcome. You. I'm glad we were able yeah. to finally do this, you yeah. know, you've been ignoring us for a while, but <laughs> hey, we are, you know, no. they are doing us small, small. Uh, but yeah, it's, thank you very much. No, we're pleased to be here. It's my um, absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. And thank you, guys guys for watching this video to the end i'll put the link to kishi on the bio so on the description below so definitely check them out if you are you know sending money across africa or from the uk to africa and i'll see you in my next video don't leave this channel tell subscribe window peace out thanks guys bye, bye guys